Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to cover autoimmune encephalitis. Autoimmune encephalitis is a group of clinical syndrome that affects all age group, especially children and young adults. The symptoms vary according to the antibody involved and this broad spectrum of symptoms usually require a multidisciplinary approach. Most cases are severe and potentially fatal. Most of them have good response to immunotherapy and good prognosis. Symptoms include alteration in behavior, psychosis, catatonia or lack of movements, insomnia, memory deficit, seizures, abnormal movement and autonomic dis uh, dysregulation. Close for diagnosis. When will you suspect a, a case of autoimmune encephalitis? When there is subacute onset of memory impairment, encephalopathy or psychiatric symptom along with uh, one of the four uh, focal neurological deficit, unexplained seizure, a CSF study showing pleocytosis and MRI suggestive of autoimmune encephalitis with exclusion of any alternative diagnosis. Types of autoimmune encephalitis the first category is autoantibodies against neuronal surface antigen, anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis, GABA-A receptor encephalitis, Ophelia syndrome, autoimmune limbic encephalitis. Second category is acute demyelinating syndrome with encephalopathy like ADAM or acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder. Hashimoto encephalopathy, Opsoclonus myoclonus and other brainstem cerebellar encephalitis, Bickerstaff encephalitis, Clippers or chronic lymphocytic inflammation with pontine perivascular enhancement responsive to steroid. Then uh, those conditions which are associated with epilepsy like Rasmussen encephalitis, fires or fever induced refractory epileptic encephalopathy syndrome. And other conditions like rapid onset obesity with hypothalamic dysfunction, hyperventilation and autonomic dysregulation, basal ganglia encephalitis, pseudomigraine syndrome, ophthalmoplegic migraine. Now let's see each of them individually. Anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis. The antibodies are against GLUN1 subunit. Most cases are idiopathic and tumor and HIV infection can be a trigger. Symptoms include psychiatric problems, sleep disorders, seizure, dystonia, autonomic dysfunction. If you do EEG, it will be abnormal. MRI can show non-specific changes. CSF study will show pleocytosis with or without increased protein. 80% uh, uh, have complete recovery post immunotherapy or tumor removal. A relapse can occur in 15% cases. There is worse prognosis when associated with uh, HSC. Anti GABA A receptor encephalitis. Here, the antibody is against alpha 1, beta 3, gamma 2 subunit. Uh, it is associated with tumor in adults and in children there is no tumor association. Symptoms include refractory seizures, epilepsia partialis continua, limbo or orofacial dyskinesis. EEG is abnormal. MRI shows multifocal cortico subcortical lesions, flyer or T2 hyperintense. CSF shows pleocytosis with or without increased protein. In 80% cases, there is good recovery after immunotherapy. Ophelia syndrome. Antibodies are produced against MGLUR5 um, and it is associated with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Symptoms include abnormal behavior, seizure, memory deficit. EEG is usually abnormal, MRI is non-specific, and CSF uh, study shows pleocytosis with or without increased protein. Uh, good recovery uh, is expected after treatment. And the other group of symptoms which come under the first category, uh, there is antibodies are produced against neuronal cell surface, intraneuronal antigen and rarely they are associated with tumors. Symptoms are variable. 
and uh, if MRI is done, uh, it shows variable results. CSF shows pleocytosis with or without increased protein, and this type has variable response. Adam, uh, the antibodies are produced against MOG receptor. Uh, symptoms include seizure, motor deficit, ataxia, visual dysfunction, encephalopathy. MRI, T2 and FLIR shows large hazy abnormality with or without deep grey matter lesions. CSF shows pleocytosis with or without increased protein. In 80% cases, there is good response with steroid. NMOST, uh, aquaporin uh, 4 or MOG antibodies are there. Sometimes you will not get any antibodies, seronegative. Uh, symptoms uh, occur when... Uh, Optic nerve lesions or spinal cord lesions occur. Area post syndrome can occur. And they involve uh, the areas of brain which are rich in aquaporin 4 receptors. Treatment, uh, there is no good response. Relapse is very common. And long term disability can also occur. Cerebellar brainstem encephalitis, uh, these are usually zero negative and it is associated with neuroblastoma in children less than two years and in older ch uh, children with teratoma this is common symptoms include obsoclonus irritability ataxia falling myoclonus tremor eg is usually normal mri is normal or shows cerebellar atrophy csf can be normal or abnormal treatment for neuroblastoma can do a surgical repair and uh, there is only partial response. Teratoma however shows a very good response. Becker stuff encephalitis antibodies are produced against GQ1B receptor. Symptoms include ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, decreased consciousness, hyperreflexia over, which overlap with MF syndrome or Miller-Fisher syndrome. Uh, MRI is usually abnormal and nerve conduction studies are also abnormal. Uh, in 45% cases, nerve conduction studies are abnormal and 30% uh, cases, MRI is abnormal. It usually has a good response. Hashimoto's encephalitis, uh, thyro thyroxine peroxidase antibody is there. Uh, symptoms include stroke like. Uh, syndromes, tremor, myoclonus, aphasia, behavior problems, sleep problems. EEG shows slow uh, activation. MRI is usually normal. CSF shows increased protein. And 48% of cases there is hypothyroidism. They are usually respond uh, to steroids. Rasmussen encephalitis. This is an immune mediated reaction. Uh, prog progressive refractory partial seizures occur, cognitive decline is there, focal deficit is present and brain hemiatrophy is present. MRI shows progressive unilateral hemispheric atrophy. Uh, the response is usually limited. Functional hemispherectomy can be tried. Basal ganglia encephalitis antibodies occur against D2R receptor. Uh, the symptoms include lethargy, abnormal movement, behavioral problems and psychosis. MRI shows basal ganglia abnormality. CSF has, shows increased protein. There is complete recovery with immunotherapy in 40% cases. Clippers, there is no specific antibodies. Uh, symptoms include episodic facial paresthesia, diplopia and brainstem dysfunction. MRI shows symmetrical curvilinear gandolinium enhancement in bones which can extend to other parts. It is usually responsive, uh, it usually responds to steroids. Rohard, the antibody, uh, this is an idiopathic condition, can be associated with neural crest tumors. Symptoms include rapid onset obesity, hyperphagia. MRI is usually normal, uh, symptomatic uh, treatment is usually done and it has a limited response to steroids and immunotherapy. And now let's see some differential diagnosis for autoimmune encephalitis. 
viral encephalitis relapsing post hsv encephalitis neuroleptic malignant syndrome limbic encephalitis encephalitis lethargica clevin levin syndrome sinus vasculitis and other rheumatological conditions okay that's all guys this is 